Well, good morning. Here's the next of our devotionals on our uh, book, Lent in Plain Sight. This one is uh, from Sunday for the week that's about shoes. And this one is called Take Off Your Shoes. And it's based on Exodus 3, verses 1 through 6. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. This is a, you know, a really well-known passage. Um, and, but, you know, let's think about it for a minute. You know, you have to wonder if Moses ever expected to have an encounter with the holy that day. I mean, that's not something that many of us go into our day thinking that today I'm going to have a run in with the holy today. <laughs> I mean, a lot of us tend to relegate that idea to specific places, um, you know, like in church or in the sanctuary places that are set aside for worship, for ritual. It might be, you know, a conference retreat center or camp or wherever, but it's specific places. And we, we kind of demarcate those. We mark those off as, as holy places, as special places, as off limits to regular behavior. I mean, think about how we, the behavior we expect from people in a church sanctuary or in a church building. We expect people, you know, we have this different set of behaviors that we expect from people. That, you know, we fuss at children when they run up and down the aisles, or we expect people to be quiet and reverent all the time in a sanctuary. We, if someone says something a bit off color, people are, are shocked and horrified if they do it in church if they do it up the road at the bar on a Saturday night, well, then it's funny. But you can't say that in church. It's kind of that same idea that, that people have about pastors, that you can't say, you know, you can't tell a raunchy joke to a pastor unless you're trying to shock them. That you can't say certain words that are considered crude or vulgar in front of a pastor. Or that they should never laugh if you do. Um... I, I always get a kick out of people who forget and don't think about that. And then all of a sudden realize, or someone will poke them and say, you can't say that there's a pastor here. Like, like my, my ears are going to suddenly start bleeding and, and you know, and, or something's going to happen. Like they're going to suddenly be stricken in that moment. We expect the holy to happen only in certain places. But God refuses to be boxed in by, by the boundaries and the expectations that we create. God doesn't hold to our ideas of where holy things should happen. I mean, God speaks from, from clouds, from burning bushes, through the mouths of angels, and through donkeys. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. God will find a way to communicate with us and to get a message to us however and wherever God needs to. God alone constitutes what is holy. Now we may have special places that we love and that we appreciate, but to be perfectly honest, the sanctuary of a church is no more holy than anywhere else. It's just a place that we've set aside to, to worship together. And it's a special place. And it's important. And it means a lot to people. But it's not holy. It's just a place. 
as we're discovering now, we can still have worship and not be anywhere close to the church building. The building itself is just that. It's a building. And it's important. And it means a lot to a lot of people. And, and don't get me wrong, in, in our community in Hartford, it's kind of essential. There's not a lot of other places for people to meet and congregate when we're able to do that again, other than in that church building. So it's an important part of the community, but it's not holy. Only God is holy. Our role, when we come in contact with the holy, when we have those moments, a holy moment, is we're supposed to respond. You know, follow the instructions. <laughs> Listen. Just simply be present. Take off our shoes. I mean, if we truly thought the sanctuary was holy, we should all take our shoes off before we walk in it. And we don't. Maybe that's an idea. Maybe we should have shoe racks, you know, outside the doors or something. Personally, I would love to preach barefooted because I hate shoes. I always have. I don't like them. In fact, that was one of the checks in favor of, of, my, of when Eric and I were dating of my husband was that when I went to his parents' house to meet them for the first time, his mother's like, shoes are optional in our house. You can wear them or not. We don't care. And I was like, I like you because... <laughs> I've never liked wearing shoes. I never have them on in my house. When you come up into my house, um, especially if you come unannounced. Now, if we know visitors are coming, we tend to put the shoes away. But there's a pile of them by the door and at the top of the stairs because nobody wants to wear shoes in the house. We just don't. It doesn't mean my house is holy. It just means we don't like to wear our shoes. Now, the kicker is that God can make any place holy. It's God's presence that makes a place holy, not that place in and of itself. It's the experience that happened there. It's the presence of God there that makes it holy. Now, our, our sanctuary isn't holy just because it's a sanctuary. It might be holy because God has been present there. That's different. A place isn't holy simply because it exists. A place is holy because God is present and experienced in that place. But that also means anywhere can be holy. Any place can be holy. It doesn't have to be indoors, could be outdoors, could be anywhere. As I sit here, you know, right by my back porch and I can hear all the neighborhood dogs barking. I know they're all being noisy. There, something's back there today, driving everybody nuts. But any place can be holy. Anywhere can. It doesn't have to be where we expect. It's the presence of God. So here's some questions. Have you ever experienced holy ground in an unexpected place? What made it holy and how did you respond to it? Why did God instruct Moses to take off his shoes? What did his shoes symbolize? Have you ever taken off your shoes literally or metaphorically as a sign of respect or of humility? And that's an important one. When have you taken your shoes off as a sign of respect or humility? So that's just something to think about. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I know it was a little noisier than most. The dogs have decided that they needed to be everywhere today um, and in and out of the house about 30 times. So anyway, it is what it is. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, who knows, if they keep up their antics in a future episode, they might even photobomb this and you might get to see them. So, <laughs> But I hope you all have a good day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.